So here's... Alright, Season 2 of Beastars just finished airing, and this is one of those videos where I have to give a spoiler warning right away. So, I'm gonna do that. Spoilers for Chapter 71 of Beastars and Season 2, Episode 7 of Beastars and on. So with that out of the way, let's get back to it! I'm just gonna break the mold right away and say it. Riz, the antagonist of the Murder Solution arc of Beastars. Speaking of which, welcome to Part 4 of my Murder Solution series. This time, we'll be covering the actual, you know, murder. Wait, I already said that. Riz is the third out of the four and a half antagonist in Beastars. I say half because I really don't know if I should count Yafia or not for the Life as a High School Dropout arc. But not counting Yafia, Riz is probably the best written antagonist in the series. In my opinion, at least. Melon is cool and all, but unlike Riz, I feel like he didn't have a defined goal. Sure, he had interesting motivations, but in the end, what exactly was he trying to accomplish? Riz over here has both an interesting motivation and a defined goal. What exactly are those, though? Well, if I were to compare Riz to someone, it would be... Oh boy, this is gonna sound very generic, but it's true. Yoshikage Kira. Riz committed murder, and now he just wants to live a quiet life. Riz is what you would call a passive antagonist. What does that mean? Well, in a story, you have the protagonist and the antagonist who are intertwined in a conflict with each other. You have active and passive variants of both. A passive protagonist is the type of character who is just chilling, minding their own business, and then the antagonist actively goes out and creates conflict that the protagonist is thrown into and has to go against. A reactory response. Now imagine that, but reversed. Riz committed murder, but didn't want to start a conflict with anyone afterwards, so he laid low and decided not to engage in any conflict at all. Therefore, in his situation, he became passive. Lugosi, our protagonist, who is active in this situation, and if I'm gonna be honest, Lugosi is the active protagonist in every arc, which I actually really like. Anyway, Lugosi could have just continued minding his own business too. He didn't have to accept Rokume's offer. But what's so interesting about Lugosi is that he pursues things no matter what, no matter the consequences. And that's what happened here. What I'm trying to get out of here is that all of the times we've seen real-eyed murderous Riz, except one of the times, are a result of Lugosi's doing. As I said before, Riz is laying low and he doesn't want to devour anyone else. Unlike Kira, he doesn't have this whole secret plan to continue killing people while laying low. He literally does just want to live a normal life. Normally, with characters like Riz, you would see them pretending to act normal, but then when the other characters go off screen, he starts acting all dastardly and evil and such. But what's unique about Riz's character is that what he's doing isn't an act. He only acts vicious when Lugosi actively pursues him. What the hell are you talking about, you meat eater? Are you just telling that to yourself? L Lugosi! Tell me, Riz. Tell me how guilty Tao is for his crimes. Stop it, Lugosi! Uh, someone stop him! Let's stop this. They're all watching. I don't care. That's only your concern. All carnivores should know how to control their emotions. Your soul is inferior to mine. I don't feel torment anymore because I know how herbivores taste like. The point that I'm getting at in all of this is that Riz is living a delusion that he forgot was fake, and the reasons why he acts out so harshly against Lugosi is because of, well, something that Lugosi doesn't even know he's doing. Lugosi thinks that Riz is just some thug who pretends to be good, so every time he sees Riz acting friendly, that especially pisses him off. While the way that Riz perceives all of this is completely different. Riz has convinced himself that what he did was not wrong, and so he continues living on as if everything is normal. But Lugosi pointing out his wrongdoing causes his subconscious to slowly unravel the truth of what really happened, with him and Tem to him. And since his mind is constantly trying to convince himself that he's in the right, his own active and subconscious minds begin to conflict with each other and he begins to act out out of panic. In Riz's mind, he has convinced himself that he is not the villain, and that is why he's still able to act nice without it being, you know, an act. Murder slash attempted murder is a traumatic event, not just for the victim, but also for the person committing the act themselves. Now, I'm going to be expanding on some of the stuff I talked about in part two of this series, the Tem video. Riz is this large carnivorous grizzly bear, and because of that fact, so many people are scared of him, carnivores and herbivores alike. 
Tem, an herbivore less than half of his size, accepted him for who he was, and that was life-changing for him. Riz has to take government-mandated strength reduction pills that all bears over 2 meters tall have to take, and Tem told Riz that he doesn't think it was weird that he had to take them. But Riz interpreted that as Tem telling him that he doesn't have to take those pills at all. And so Riz lost control and devoured Tem. In the Tem video, I was confused if the revised version of the Tem death scene in chapter 77 was real or just one of Riz's delusions. Reading what your guys' theories of it were in the comments of that video, and now watching that scene in the anime, I have come to the conclusion of what we were really seeing. What we're seeing is all real, until we hit this panel right here, where Tem says, That's why you don't have to hide anything from me. We're best friends. It would make a lot of sense that Riz's delusion started right here, because as we've seen with how he perceived Tem's death as a whole, any violence that he commits towards his friends that he experiences, his mind instantly, and I really mean in only a matter of seconds, triggers a coping mechanism that alters his perception of what is currently happening or what has already happened. It seems the way that this mechanism works and why it happens is that Riz really just wants the best for himself and his friends. But he wants it so badly to the point where if things go wrong, his mind instantly tries to make up for it and keep him from having a complete mental breakdown. Now back to how committing murder is traumatic for everyone involved. There are people out there who feel nothing from murder. But with seeing how Riz's mind works, he obviously isn't that type of person. After he murdered Tem, his mind was in extreme disarray after trying to sort out the fact that he is now a murderer and also trying to suppress that same fact. If Riz's mind goes into a state of coping that involves extreme cognition changes from just breaking his friend's arm, just imagine how much that coping mechanism has to cover with a full-on murder. As a result, Riz's cognition of everything surrounding Tem's murder became extremely distorted. God, I sound like a Persona 5 character. <laughs> Cooking calms my heart down. We're best friends. It makes me remember clearly of Tem and that night. I'll accept every part of you, Riz. Eating is the celebration of life. Tem, when you were about to enter my mouth, you were smiling, weren't you? My memories must become more beautiful. As long as I never forget how Tem tasted, I'll never yearn for my sense of taste. Chapter 89 is where we see his method of coping in action. He convinces himself one thing, which leads into another deeper thing, which leads even deeper and deeper to the point where everything through his viewpoint becomes distorted beyond belief. We've even seen him do this with Lugosi. In this same chapter, we see another reason why Riz reacts so harshly to Lugosi pressing him. Remember how I said the first reason is that Lugosi is unintentionally reminding him of the truth of the reality of the situation, and so his coping mechanism and his subconscious mind are constantly battling to keep each other suppressed, which causes him to fall into extreme panic? Well, the second reason is the thing that his coping mechanism is trying to fight against the truth with. His coping mechanism has convinced him that devouring a person is actually just making friends with them. And Lugosi trying to expose the fact that he ate Tem is really just him trying to come between and break up the friendship that Riz established with Tem. Therefore, in order to stop Lugosi from doing that, he must become friends with him. You and I are going to have the fiercest friendship the world has ever seen. I wonder what a friendship with you would taste like, Lugosi-kun. By the climax of the murder solution arc, Riz's coping mechanism had become so out of control that he no longer was living any truth at all. At the beginning, just the murder attempt was distorted in his mind, but then Lugosi had to be accounted for, which put even more mental strain on him, which became his breaking point and led him to straight up trying to commit murder again. Because of how deep Riz was in his own delusions, he convinced himself that anyone trying to break apart his friendship with Tem should be killed. But of course, since Riz can't come to terms with the fact that he is a murderer, he just has to become friends with Lugosi and Pina. Oh yeah, Pina. So... Alright, stop the video for one sec. This originally wasn't in the script, but I just had to put this in the video because it was that good. Look at this. Fucking look at this! Same scene, same voice actor, they're even at the same position at the table, what the fuck? 
So Lugosi isn't the only one who knows that Riz is the killer. When Lugosi was confronting Riz about it, Pina kind of sort of overheard everything, and so now he and Lugosi are both pursuing Riz. Pina is a lot less active about it than Lugosi is though, but that doesn't mean that he and Riz still don't have their moments of opposition. Lugosi is the one who lives in Riz's mind rent-free, while Pina is kind of just a thorn in his side. So, how does Riz interpret Pina? Well, we really don't get to see much of that compared to his inner thoughts on Lugosi, but I'll talk about all I can with that. Pina's character is that he's all bark and no bite. He constantly talks about how anyone could do whatever they want because it's in their nature to do so, but just because they do it still doesn't make it right. He lives his own life like that. He tells Lugosi that he could eat him and he wouldn't care. He would still put him down for wanting to do something like that, but he still wouldn't care. And that overconfident attitude transfers over to how he talks to Riz. Now let's try to get inside Riz's mind and try to picture how he thinks of Pina because of it. Riz's coping mechanism has convinced him that he has done nothing wrong, but Pina just loves to push his buttons. Uh, Pina, <laughs> Riz is pretty unstable as it is. Maybe you should be a little more careful what you say, oh god. Pina already talks down to carnivores, and as we can see with all the other carnivores in the drama club, they are pretty damn conflicted by that. So imagine how Riz, who is already very conflicted with how Pina knows that he's Tem's killer, would also take Pina's talking down to him. Well, as the murder solution arc continues to move forward, that thorn that Pina is in Riz's side begins to grow way beyond just a thorn. I'm looking forward to practice today, Pina Kun. Hey, you surprised me, Riz Senpai. I don't think I can pee here. Can't get comfortable peeing next to a murderer, you know? I'm out of here. You're part of this too, you know. You're the only other one than Lagosikun who knows about my murder. I think what I'll do after I kill Lagosikun is let loose all of my emotions and devour you from top to bottom. From top to bottom? I wouldn't do that if I were you. These horns are clearly in the way, and I really don't think they taste very good. Huh? No. Ah, ah. Sorry about that. Your fingers smelled like honey. <laughs> What's so important about this scene is that this signifies Riz's complete shift of character as a direct result of both Lugosi and Pina's pressure, and his own coping mechanism enveloping his mind too much. Twist villains aren't always the best because they come out at the end of the movie or arc, and we barely get to know that character, you know, as the villain, but what I like about Riz is that he wasn't handled that way. Sure, he wasn't exactly built up the best, so his reveal wasn't as shocking, but at least we did get to know him as the antagonist for over half of the arc, and so we got to see him develop to what he had become by the climax of the arc. Towards the beginning of the video, I talked about how Riz was a passive antagonist and how Lugosi was the trigger that forcibly started bringing out his true side. Well, there actually is a point in the arc where Riz does shift from being passive to also active. That moment was chapter 84, when he straight up tried to kill Lugosi in the school showers. Well, there was that time earlier when Riz blindfolded Lugosi and tried to kill him, but the difference between that time and the time in the showers was that back then, Riz continued to be passive even after Lugosi survived his attack. He was only doing things as a result of Lugosi trying to disrupt his peaceful life, and even though it didn't work, at least Lugosi didn't figure out that he was the killer. Well, that was until the... Deep, deep kiss. Yeah. But the shower fight is different because of the fact that from this point on, Riz's pursuit of both Lugosi and Pina was no longer something he was just going to do from the shadows and try to continue living a normal life and not attack again if Lugosi stopped actively searching him out. He knew that he could no longer just react back to them and try to cover up what they're saying in the moments where they could possibly spill the beans about his murder. At this point, he had to actively pursue Lugosi and Pina to make sure those moments could never possibly happen happen again. This is what I like about Riz's character and his development. His antagonist versus protagonist relationship with Lugosi is so much stronger than, uh, let's say Lugosi's same type of relationship with Tayama or Melon, because of the fact that the things that Riz does are all direct results of Lugosi. Let's say, what if Lugosi wasn't there for the Meteor Festival arc or the Revenge of the Love Failure arc? Tayama still would have kidnapped Haru, and Melon still would have done the elephant tusk trafficking regardless. 
But if Lugosi wasn't there in the murder solution arc, then Riz wouldn't have done all of the things he did in this arc, other than eat Tem, of course, but that was before this arc, and it was also to set the foundations for the arc, and also kind of have it set where Riz isn't doing anything after it and just wanting to live a normal life. The reason why I'm talking about all this is because Beastars is a heavily character-driven manga, and I feel that Riz and Lugosi's actions being entirely based off of what they do to each other is one of the best examples in this series, that the manga is so well known for. I'm not saying that writing an antagonist like Tayama is a bad thing. Of course it's not. But what I'm trying to say is that in my opinion, Beastars is at its best when having a reactionary antagonist like Riz, because I feel that Paru was able to take advantage of that aspect of him to craft the most personal and engaging conflict that Lugosi has ever had with an antagonist in the series. So now, this all leads me to the climax of the murder solution arc, the New Year's Eve duel between Riz and Lugosi. This wasn't just a fight between two cars. Carnivores. This was a clash of two ideals of what a carnivore's true purpose is. You see, in the shower fight, where Lugosi had fully pushed Riz to the breaking point of his denial, something new came to light within him. Riz had to use violence to make Tem become his friend, and now he has to use violence to do the same to make Lugosi one too. What I find so interesting about the complexity of Riz's character is how you can see how some of his new ideals that he coins throughout the murder solution arc are a direct result of Lugosi breaking down his coping mechanism and Riz trying to build around those cracks. The truth of reality is that Riz wanted to express friendliness with his carnivore strength, but all it brought him was pain. But he doesn't know that he's feeling pain because his mind told him that he was just becoming friends with Tem. But at the back of his mind, the pain is still there. That caused Riz to come up with the mindset that the only way to become friends with someone was through a painful act. Therefore, a carnivore's strength only exists to cause them pain. That's what this final battle is about. It is Riz and his ideal of how a carnivore's strength is only there to cause them pain, and Lugosi's ideal of how a carnivore's strength is there to protect, and that strength to protect is fueled by passion and love. Right before this battle, Riz does something pretty insane, but it also does match up with his development past the shower fight. He wants Lugosi to fight without holding back, and so he does something kind of drastic. So now, I'm about to cover a scene that was actually added in the anime, and it was a pretty welcome addition. Riz is now pushed over the edge and decides to kidnap Pina, and in the manga, it just happened off screen, but in the anime, we actually see it happen. The scene is kind of a continuation to the <laughs> scene, with Pina trying to talk down to Riz again, but Riz deciding to go against him with violence. Anyway, for the final battle, Riz is so desperate to not let the time he spent with Tem go that he is ready to fully go through it devouring Pina and Lugosi. This was it. This was the battle that was either going to save Riz from his own delusions or have him drown in them. He did come very close to winning though, but thanks to the combined efforts of both Louis and Lugosi, they were able to save Riz from himself, and he finally came to his senses. It might not be the best time to say it, but, Happy New Year. <sighs> you win, Lugosi. <sighs> My heart's been broken for the past year, but now I feel like I can actually breathe now. I sugarcoated my memory of Tem, and I looked at the herbivores around me like they were food so I could protect myself from getting hurt. I was wrong about everything, and I was found out by a very strange wolf. He ate flesh, and yet, his eyes look beautiful. I must have looked nothing like him when I ate Tem. My face was covered in blood, just as he is right now. Yet the difference is clear. You have established a genuine carnivore-herbivore friendship. I feel that this was the perfect way to end the murder solution arc. Riz's actions were dictated by Lugosi this whole arc, so it's the perfect send-off that Lugosi was the one to finally save him from himself. In Riz's new cleared state of mind, he started to find acceptance for what happened. All this time, he was just continuously denying what really happened with him and Tem, and that's what led him into this path of madness. But now that he's accepted what has happened, he could finally move on and become a better person. You know now? Huh? The cops are here? Oh! Well, even though Riz finally accepted the truth and wants to better himself because of it, doesn't mean that he still doesn't have to serve the time for his murder. 
That leads us to where Riz is currently, Juvie. We didn't see anything about him in Beast Complex, so I assume that he's still in there currently, but he'll be out one day, and he'll be ready to live life as a better person. You know why? Well, after all of this, Lugosi, Louie, and Pina realized that Riz, in the end, was just lonely. And while Lugosi and Louie couldn't do anything about it because they were, yeah, very occupied with other stuff at the moment, Pina decided to take it upon himself to actually get to know Riz. Chapter 182. This is during the climax of the Revenge of the Love Failure arc, slash the unfortunate climax of all of Beastars. But anyway, it shows a lot of the characters from the past story arcs and what they're currently doing while the final battle happens, and I was not expecting to see Riz again, but I'm glad that we did. He's lost a lot of weight in Juvie, and he doesn't seem to be doing the best physically, but luckily, he has someone waiting for him when he finally gets out. Pina visits him in there twice a month, and he's just dying for Riz to get out of there so they could hang out under normal circumstances without, you know, a cell and a muzzle having to be involved. Also, I might as well bring this up because a lot of people do that when talking about this chapter. Pina saying that Riz is his first male friend. What does that mean? Well, I thought Lugosi, Bill, and Aoba were his friends too, but I guess Pina doesn't really consider them that? Or does he mean it romantically? I, I really don't know. Well, whatever. In the end, Riz finally truly got what he wanted. He wanted a genuine friendship with an herbivore, and after committing a murder, letting that drive him into being delusional, being forcefully saved from that delusion, and paying the time for his crime, He's atoning, growing, and finally has a second chance to start over and do things right this time. It's sad that Riz couldn't get help before all this happened. Maybe if he did, Tem would still be here. But the past is in the past, and can't be changed. What matters is what we do now in the present. What we do with the past is learn from it, and use that knowledge to better ourselves in the present. The horrible things that Riz did will never go away from history, but he's accepted that, and is trying to change for the better now. He's no longer living in the past, and even though we may never know what his future will truly be like, at least things are looking better. See you guys for the final part of the Murder Solution series, Beastars Season 2 Thoughts. I just wanted to say thank you so much to all the people who voiced in this video, and a very special thank you to Joseph VS. He was the director and audio engineer for all the dub scenes in this video, and he did a phenomenal job at both. Thank you so much as always, man. Please check him out. So anyway, plug time. Join my Discord server and follow me on Twitter. As always, thank you to my patrons. Your guys' support means so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, what's next? Well, sorry if you guys heard some mic crackling throughout this video. I try my best to prevent that, um, but a couple slipped through. Um, I'm having microphone troubles and I'm probably gonna have to buy a new mic. It should be fixed up by the next video, so don't worry about it. Alright, anyway, it's a Buki month now and this video was supposed to come out mid-March. I'm sorry about that, guys. School has been hitting extra hard. I've been going back on things that I said in the update video, but yeah, I'm gonna have to delay a Buki month to May. April is the final month of the semester for me, and since almost all of my classes are doing final projects, yeah, April is gonna be packed. I'm still gonna get the anime thoughts video up soon, and probably the AOT video, but yeah, don't expect too too much from April. I'm sorry about that guys. May will be a Buki month, and there's going to be a lot of content, I promise. Anyway, I'll see you guys next week or so for the anime season 2 thoughts.